found a home, a two-bedroom home, gated for $600 a year. $600 a year. And the idea that you could live somewhere so beautiful and that would be your rent, that opens a, a lot of doors for people. So I have a subtotal of $490. That's crazy. So without getting doing much extra, right? like scuba diving and you know, traveling much and all that, it would be right around $500 a month, Right. which I'm still shaking my head at. I'm looking at that and I go, well, that's actually my numbers. So, Well, Bali is amazing. When you live in Indonesia, particularly Bali, you never leave the forest. You never leave the jungle. It's literally green everywhere. The amazing thing about Bobby is that he sources really great apartments for real, really reasonable prices. And in Playa del Carmen, you, you found an apartment for 400 bucks a month, and we interviewed you there. And then we talked to you here, and you found one for $83 a month. And now you're in one even cheaper, is that right? Yeah, it's almost, <laughs> it's almost embarrassing to say, because unless you're in with the locals and you know where how to go about finding places. Pretty quality place, really. Yeah, I saw um, the, we'll show them the photos, Yeah, so, the video. Yeah, so the first place was a three bedroom for $83, so that was $1,000 a year. Right. After that lease was up and I'd visited the United States to see my family and I came back, I, I needed to renew with another, another, another home. I leased a two bedroom home in North Bali in an area called Kalibukbuk, which is in uh, Lavina Beach in North Bali, close to a, a town called Singaraja in the province, you could say, of Bulang, if that means anything <laughs> to anyone. So, and I, I was very close with a, with a Balinese family up there, and my buddy Eddie took me around, and we found a home, a two-bedroom home, gated for $600 a year. <laughs> $600 a year. I mean, I literally have no rent. I mean, of course, I paid it in full immediately. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah, 50 bucks a month is kind of, yeah. you know, I, I'm not trying to outdo anybody. I just can't pass up a good deal. No, it's really great because, you know, there's a lot of people in America that, that or all over the world that, you know, because of what's happened over the last 20 years, the economy doing this sort of thing, and it's more mm -hmm. of it now, they just yeah. don't have as much money as they thought. And the idea that you could live somewhere so beautiful and that would be your rent. That opens a, a lot of doors for people. And I'm not saying everybody is mm -hmm. going to be as smart as you, be able to go out and find something like that. But the, just the fact that even if you know, even if their rent's going to be 500 or 400 a month, it's much less than it might be in their home country. And it's a beautiful country. So absolutely. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, and today we have one of our old favorites back, Bobby. And Bobby, we met first met Bobby in Mexico. And then he moved to Bali. We interviewed him once about Bali, and he's still here two years later. Welcome to the channel, Bobby. Good to be back. We discovered each other again. It was amazing because I had just started looking at your site again. Dan's in Bali right now. Oh, my God, I have to figure out how to contact him. <laughs> and so we, we managed to contact yeah. each other again. I met Robert or Bobby in, in Mexico the first time. And he, at the time, I think you had decided to retire at 62. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Retired at 62. It was right in the beginning of the COVID before they had vaccines or anything. It was March 2020. Right. And I would, had been considering a little bit, you know, about retiring early. And then honestly. Honestly, a lot of it was your fault. One of your, I discovered your channel and my, I, I, even before COVID started, I was in a search for several months considering a future and how I wanted to live this beautiful life traveling in islands and beach life. And I came across your channel and one of the things you talked about is that considering retiring early or, or, or not. Long-term goal was always to come to Southeast Asia. I hadn't even, even, hadn't even narrowed it down to Bali yet, but I knew it was gonna be Southeast Asia because I'd been to Indonesia and I'd been to Thailand before and I'd been to Fiji and I just love that this part of the world. However, because of COVID, it was impossible. The they only place that down. was open yeah. was Mexico. Mexico was the only place. Yeah. Mexico yeah. has never shut down. Yeah, yeah. So it was dangerous and I shouldn't go, it was terrible. But I, so I moved to, moved to Mexico and I, was, I went through all the different steps in scuba diving. I did over a hundred dives, primarily in the cenotes, in those caves. Oh, wow. Yeah. Underwater caves and in, in the ocean too. And then you moved over here. How long, is, how long have you been here? I've been in Bali now almost exactly two years. I arrived March 27, 2021. Tell us a little bit about what it is that you like about living in, on this beautiful island. Well, Bali is amazing. When you live in Indonesia, particularly Bali, you never leave the forest, you never leave the jungle. It's literally green everywhere. So you don't finally find the one part of the island that's not green. It's, yeah. 
There is no end to it. Yeah. It's just beautiful. And literally, you can walk in the forest, and of course, much of it is private property or whatever, so you got to be careful, but you could walk through the, the, the uh, jungle and never need to buy food, really. I mean, literally, fruits and are of every kind are right in the jungle. I mean, the banana tea, trees, coconut trees, and then the exotic fruit they have here. Right. It's just so lush. I mean, if you're not in the jungle, I would call it, right. you're in agricultural land, right. which is basically jungle that has been cleared out for rice paddies yeah, or, rice or paddies. for agriculture. Yeah, exactly. And they grow everything here. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have an idea of what your rent is. You actually have a larger pension than you really need to live here, don't you? I mean, what yeah. do you think? Yeah, yeah, that's plenty. Again, I retired early, so my, my Social Security that I took early is only about 1700 Okay. a month. Yeah. It went up a little bit. You get a raise every year. Right, right. <laughs> but, and I was warned by my family, of course, that it's not going to be enough and you'll be sorry. And yes, I did, I did build a, a cushion. Yeah. And I still have a bit of a cushion. But frankly, I really haven't needed it much. Yeah. It has proven to be enough, definitely. Right. So give us an idea, what are, what are some of the other things that you spend money on other than rent? Like, what do you spend on groceries and going out to restaurants? And maybe not, you don't have to be exact, but just, just round. Well, I think you're going to have the breakdown for me. Yeah. When you, oh, do, you, do you want it? I can give it. Oh, I yeah. Know. I actually... He sent this to me before. I had never done the research on myself to really get the details. I mean, that's <laughs> how much I don't care about, yeah, well, about well, money, I guess. But If you keep your thumb on there, okay, it'll stay per perfect. up. Perfect. So this is what I would estimated my cost. So... A one-year home, $600, 50 bucks a month. Groceries, an average of $150 a month. Restaurants, a little bit more in restaurants. So probably at least, uh, I put 260 as an average. Right. So that can vary, but... How many times a week would you say you average oh, you go out? Probably three or four. Times a yeah. week? Okay. Yeah, sometimes more. Okay. <laughs> but we also, I also cook at home. Internet, $16.50. $16.50. Okay. City, $33. Okay. Yeah. Water. Two dollars and thirty cents. Right. One that I forgot to list, which I'll add, is laundry. Right. About a hundred thousand rupia, which is about eight dollars. It's a little less, I think. Yeah. Fifteen to one right now. Seven. Okay. So yeah, we're closer maybe to seven. Seven bucks a month yeah. for laundry, and that's yeah. sourcing it out. Garbage pickup. Yeah. Right? So you don't have to do it. You just bring. No, no. You, you drop it off, and then a couple of days you pick it up, and yeah. it's all iron folded, and oh yeah, yeah no, yeah. no, it's amazing. Garbage pickup. Three dollars and thirty cents. Now, I listed the next one as items, miscellaneous, and so forth. So for miscellaneous, I put $75. Right. No, let's see. Oh, shopping, miscellaneous, $75. And then other things like helping family and or, you know, if, if I'm, you know, dating and so forth. Right. Another $100 right. uh, a month. Right. And that number can be, can be higher at times. Yeah, sure, sure. sure. If you're dating yeah. more. Yeah. I put some of that's uh, probably in the restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I have a subtotal of $490. That's crazy. So without getting, doing much extra, right? like scuba diving and, you know, and traveling much and all that, it would be right around $500 a month. Right. Which I'm still shaking my head at. I'm looking at that and I go, well, that's actually my numbers. So now what I did is I, av I added that on. So I added on travel and recreation. Oh, good. So for travel, recreation, and hotels, that said, I probably come down to this area in the South Valley and the rest of the Valley, and I've traveled to Java, and I've traveled to other, other islands. I probably do something like that once a month. Okay. Yeah, once a month. So That's I do great. travel a lot, That's even great. though I'm living in paradise. Yeah. And I put down for that a, an additional 400 to $600. So if you add that four to 600 to the original 500, right. which you could just get by on the 500. Just if you're, get by. If you're just frugal. Especially if you're single and you, you know, you're, right. you're, and again, I don't drink much, so that also that helps. I don't difference. have a big alcohol tab, so that, right. add that in if you're, yeah. if you're a drinker. That's not part of my groceries, really. It's an average of a thousand to twelve hundred dollars a month. Yeah, no, <clears throat> that's great because even if you're doing on this, just getting by mode, as you call mm -hmm. it, you're near the beach, aren't you? So, yeah, my getting by mode is still going to restaurants four or five times a week. You know, you you see the the cost here. You're you're here now, so maybe, you know, thirty to. 50,000 for a really, really good meal. Oh, yeah, really which good. is Which is like, you know, three bucks. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and so this this extra four to six, even then you're only up to around 1,200 or so, give or take. Yes, and not all of that is necessary. Now, I'm not including the once a year travel back to the United States to right. see my family right. or something right. like that. 
right. you know, and that could be another thousand flights. easy. Yeah, Tw twice a year, or once a year. Once a year. Yeah, once a year. Yeah. So that four to six hundred extra was just in Indonesia travel right. and traveling around the island, and and we we you know I, I'm. I go for it. I mean, I stay in, in nice villas and nice hotels once in a while, which could be well, 30, 40 bucks. Yeah. Still, still, that sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Especially when you post your, your photos on Facebook or your friends see them and go, what? I can't believe How I just said that? that. 30 or 40 bucks a night, that's still super cheap. It's still super but cheap. But when you live here, that's not cheap. It's not cheap, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah it takes an adjustment. You can adjustment. find hotels for 12 bucks a night, so. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, so if you could talk to Bobby of four years ago when you were thinking about moving, what, what would you say to him? I would say something I said in one of my previous videos with you, and that is whatever you decide to bring, leave 90% of it home. That would be one, one strong piece of advice. Right. You're not moving to a third world country where they don't have anything. Bali's extremely modern. Indonesia's yeah. very modern. Yeah. Can you find more primitive areas in, the, in this land of 50,000 islands? Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. you can, yeah, yeah. but no, you're never too far. I mean, there's more, I've seen more markets here and more access to stuff, yeah. whatever you need. Yeah, shoes, shirts, yeah. shampoo, all the stuff you think. Yeah, furniture, you whatever, whatever you yeah, need. furniture. So, and then in the, way, in the way of shirts, shirts and clothing, leave most of it home. Right. Come with the bare minimum and buy stuff when you get here. That, right. would, be, that would be my advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So other advice would be, one, I want to say cautiously because I don't want to go into it too deeply, but I will say it anyway, that if you're going to date, wait till you get here. Okay. You can meet some wonderful people online, you right. know, with the dating sites. Yeah. But, uh, and I did, but I would recommend just coming solo, nothing set up. Right. Set up, get yourself settled in. Yeah. And then start considering. And it could be somebody you considered that you were considering online. But get established first. Right. And be know. here. And again, that's nothing against the dating sites. I've yeah, used yeah, them yeah. off and on for years. Yeah, yeah. But I would just recommend that out of the gate, no. Come first. Yeah. Settle in. And then either meet somebody, you know, organically, as they say, which is super easy here, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Or you can do it online also. But then you're, you're, also, you're already settled in and got your, got, got your feet on the ground. One of the things that expats or people from all over the world worry about when they leave their home country, they somehow think that where they live is safe and that the rest of the world is dangerous. What are your thoughts about that? This is probably the safest place that I've been in my life. And I've been, I don't know, not, not as many as you, but I've been to 20, 25 countries. I felt safe in Mexico, in Playa del Carmen. Right. But compared to Playa del Carmen, you know, this is, compared to anywhere, this is extremely safe. So Mexico is safe compared to the United States. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, don't be mad at me because everybody wants to think that Mexico is dangerous. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, if you go in the certain parts and you, you know, you want to, you can certainly find some dangerous yeah, areas. Yeah, sure. Just like the U.S. But yeah. I felt no danger there. Uh, yeah. I did have a couple, just some incidences where I, where I, I, I made sure I exercised caution. But here, no, I can feel like I can walk anywhere, anytime. You'll see, see fem female tourists and ladies here yeah, yeah. walking alone all the time. Yeah. You know, Indonesia in general is extremely safe. Yeah. What, what do you attribute that to? Well, particularly in Bali, it's karma. Karma, yeah. It's karma. It's their Hindu faith. Yeah. And they strongly believe that what you do goes around, comes around. And so they are kind by nature, but they're also kind because they strongly believe in good and evil. And there's a evil gods out there and good gods, and they strongly believe that you can curse your life and get in a lot of trouble by doing someone wrong. And so it's really inherent. That's, I hear that everywhere I go. I love asking the locals. I always say to them, you're also happy here. And you're also friendly and you have smiles on your faces. What do you attribute that to? And they all, nine, Eight, nine times out of ten, they say karma. And that's what my feeling was before I asked the question about being here. It's the, they really have this idea that what goes around comes around. And so they're protecting themselves by being nice to you. thing, Dan, is that they're, it's not just a feeling that they're forced to be that way because of religion or yeah, because of karma. Yeah. They're naturally that way. Just, you know, all you need to do is just smile and they smile back. I mean, and they're so polite. If you go in what would be considered a, a quick mart, they don't have 7-Eleven, but you know, like a stop and go, they have go by different names here. Yeah, yeah. 
Alpha Mart, Endo Mart, they're so courteous. And when you walk in the door, if they're not busy with somebody at the register, or even if they are, usually they look up and say, welcome, or how can I help you? In, in, in Indonesian, of course. And then, yeah, they're just, they're just, if you need something, they come out from behind the counter, great customer service, and will walk you to the aisle where you can find it. Right. Yeah. They're just polite, friendly, nice people, and they're ready to engage you and talk to you and be friendly. Yeah, they are. It's, it's a lovely situation. So, so another thing that, that uh, when people <coughs> move to other countries, they have to work through in their mind is health care. What, what, what are your thoughts about health care? You know what? I'm probably going to know l less about that than anything you could ask me. And, you know, I just, first of all, I'm extremely healthy and I rarely get sick. But I've never had to use a health care facility in two years. I did have a friend who needed to go to a, a clinic. We didn't go to a main hospital, but to a clinic. And they were very effective, very efficient. And medication was needed. They were able to prescribe that and, and so forth. So it was really, really pretty simple. Right. And that was without insurance. And it was relatively, I thought it was very affordable. Yeah. So I think overall it's going to be good, especially if you're down here and where you are now in Ubud or further south in, in Passar area, the right. main city. They have a lot of medical facilities. I don't know how it would compare to other countries like Malaysia or Thailand that is known for really good health care, but or the Philippines, but I think it's probably going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. So you are going to be 65 this coming up, right? No. No? No. How dare you? I'm going to be 66. <laughs> oh, 66. You know, on May, on May 20th, I'll be 66. My son, Clayton, is 33 on May 15. We celebrate, we're going to celebrate our birthdays oh, together. Nice. He'll be exactly half my age, 33 to my 66. And it looks like you hit the gym. So I do. Do you, it, have a, do you have a gym that you work out here, and is it equipped, and what does it cost? Yeah, go to the All-Star Gym. It is. It was eighty thousand. Now it's ninety thousand rupee, <laughs> which is about five six bucks. Is that per a month? A month. Wow. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And they have all the equipment and. Uh, no, it's a nice gym. Yeah, yeah. all the equipment. A very yeah. nice gym. Yeah. And they've yeah. got beverages and you know if you need a protein drink or water or an energy drink or whatever, they've got all this, all that stuff too. Right. And they provide a towel and yeah, no, they keep it clean. There's a lady that's going through cleaning and mopping and cleaning the equipment. Very sanitary. So they have spray bottles too. We're supposed to do it really, you know, the spray right, right, on before right. or after. So they're very conscious, not really worried about COVID anymore, but they're very clean conscious. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that my subscribers always say about you when you're on my channel, like, is this your third or fourth? Uh, is, it seems like the fourth, but maybe it's third. fourth. It, it is fourth. fourth. It yeah. is fourth. Yeah. Didn't we do two in Mexico? We did two in Mexico. Oh. One where we, you showed your apartment and then one on the beach yeah, where you went yeah, through the analysis we did do two. of why you picked yeah. 62. And then when you moved here, you showed us, you explained your apartment. My first, my first, uh, first apartment. Oh, that's actually house. Year. House, that, yeah. I, that I and we'll in. put we'll put all of if you want to watch Bobby, we'll put all three. Yeah, below. so this is my fourth time. It's You're your right. fourth time. Yeah, so everyone's always saying it's such a great attitude. Bring him back on the channel. And so, one of the things about you and the reason we get along is you always have a really good attitude about life. And tell us about that. And tell us you're actually helping people w with that now, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm actually what's called an imagination coach. Right. What is an imagination coach? Well, basically, it's a life coach. I work with people online, on Zoom, and by phone. Right, right. None of my customers are local. They're all, it's all international. I've had clients stand in uh, 45 countries. Wow. And uh, currently working with two or three people, and every week I'll get another two or three. And the coaching can last anywhere from one week to five weeks. Right. They're always welcome to extend. Yeah. And so there's different costs for all of that. I sure, won't get sure. into that. But yeah. basically, it is based on what most people are familiar with, the law of attraction, but specifically the law of assumption, which is different. And I won't go into it too deeply. If you'd like to know more, yeah. go look up Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard is an amazing man. He was considered a mystic. And just he wrote 15 books, and he did hundreds of videos most of which were recorded and can be found online. Yeah, I've watched a few. Now, they're not actually videos, they're audios, because he passed in 1972. Okay. 
So you can find his work on on YouTube if you yeah. want to if you want to check it out, you know. Yeah. But uh, and can I mention our Facebook site? Yeah. How do people contact you if they want to learn more about it? Oh shoot. We well, can put it on the screen here later. Yeah, we'll so. give it to you. We'll give it to you later. But I belong to a Facebook site called Neville Goddard Mystic Teaching. Neville Goddard Mystic Teachings, and we've gone from 3,000 members to 48, almost 49,000 in a in a one and a half year span. Right. Mm -hmm. That's great. So it's, That's it's, great. it's really, and the people from all over the world, that's what I really enjoy about it, is I work with people from India, from Africa, from Europe, right. of course from the United States, yeah. but Asia, literally all over the world, and it's so much fun. And the thing I like about what he's teaching, this, this concept of imagination, is that in life, we all have a tendency to look at what's negative around us mm -hmm. instead of focusing on what we really need to be focusing is what we want our life to be and that's the imagination part and looking at it as if it's already true and that holds truth for me and not just uh, not only does it work in my life but also it makes sense to me from a logical point of view it's sort of like getting your head right so that instead of focusing on the wrong things you're focusing on the right thing and I, it just you know, seems so natural one way to put it dan is you know the saying uh, i need to see it to believe it yeah, yeah, yeah. Others will say you need to believe it to see it. Yeah. Well, actually, it's both. And let me explain. Yeah. You need to see it in your mind's eye. You need to imagine it. Right. And believe it true. And then you'll see it. Yeah, yeah. It might take days. It might take months. Right. It could take over a year. It's not about how long it takes. Right. But if you keep that vision in front of you. Right. As already done. As, as if it's already true. Yeah. yeah. So you have to not just believe it, but see it as you're believing it, imagine it. Yeah. It might sound complex, but it's not. No, it's great, I love it. So, no. yeah, good. So we'll put a link below so people can find you on the webpage. How do they find you? No, there's just, they can just type in Robert Mead. Okay. At the top, there's a magnifying glass. And if they, and if they, if they just look through the post, they'll find. They'll you. have to join first, so they'll get approved to, to join. Yeah. If you go through my, my post, I'm, you know, I post something yeah. several times a week, so it's easy yeah. to find me. Yeah. And then you can just say PM me or whatever, and I can, if you want yeah, to get yeah. personal contact, yeah. say, keep watching this guy's site, <laughs> because I, like I said, I blame you for my early retirement, <laughs> which I don't regret, and I'm so glad that I, that I did. I, if I had to do it over again, yeah. I would change very little. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would change very little. Like I say, I would pack less. And the other things we talked about, but other than that, no, I, I, I just, like some say, I wish I could have done it earlier. Yeah, yeah. But in my case, I really don't think I could have done it earlier. So 62 worked, worked yeah. for me, and I've been able to supplement it with my coaching, so it's, yeah. all, it's all worked out. That's great. Well, Bobby, thanks for coming back on the channel. I'm sure we'll hear again from people. Bring Bobby back, and I'm sure we'll see you again somewhere in the world, but it's so nice to see you again. Oh, it's great to see you again, and uh, travel on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dan. All right. Take care. Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Click the link in the notes below this video to get a copy of this content. Plus, grab a free copy of my ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 13 Years. While you're there, check out our catalog of retired cheap reports all over the world and our hobby income course that we just released. Thanks so much.